Hey guys, welcome back to Wrangling Data. Uh, in this video, we're gonna get a little more into the weeds, so we kinda looked at how we can select things in the last video. Now we're gonna look at how we can actually kinda modify. We're gonna uh, learn how to arrange and select things from our data. Um, this is important for uh, making it nice and readable, um, and eventually, this will also play into being able to kind of modify your data so it fits into the packages uh, that you're trying to use. Uh, so let's get into it. All right, so we're going to continue on with our uh, previous uh, R script here where we were looking at the flights. We're going to keep using that. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to make uh, a nice little banner here. Um, call this uh, a range. I'm going to do this. So, because it's all hash marks, it won't be used, but I can kind of read it. Um, so, uh, arrange allows us to arrange the data set based on the variables we desire. Um, and so, essentially, it's kind of like if you use Excel, it's kind of like sort, right? Um, so, we're going to do arrange my data, year, day, month. And if we run that, uh, it's kind of a bad example because we already had it arranged that way. Um, but to show you how this works, um, we can also do this in descending fashion. Um, so we'll do arrange my data. We're going to do DESC, which is means do it descending, month, and then we're going to do, or no, we want to do a year first, right? Year, and then descending day, and then descending month. Just run all sorts of symbols there. All right, let's try this. Perfect, so the first thing we have is the 12th of December of 2013, and then it would go, if we were to uh, save this into a variable, we'll save it into one called descending. Oops, and draw an arrow, okay. So let's run that again. All right, so we have descending up here. You see that we have the, the 1231, and then we go all the way down, we should have one one, yep, at the very bottom, perfect. Um, so you might be like, oh, wh like, why am I learning these functions? Well, if you can do all the stuff in R, it saves you having to stop being in R, go open Excel, rearrange everything in Excel, save it, load it back into R in the way that you had it formatted in Excel, etc. So it's just to be able to write this one command saves you a bunch of time having to go to your raw data in R, etc. Um, so there, it's pretty simple once you, uh, uh, you know, go through the, the process of learning how to do it. Um, one thing to note for this is that uh, missing values are always placed at the end of the data frame, regardless of ascending or descending. So if you have missing variables, they'll be an NA in your data frame. Those always get put on the bottom. Like they don't get ranked above one or below one or above 12 or below 12 or whatever. So they just always get placed last at the very bottom. And we'll get into how to deal with those uh, a little bit more as we go. All right, I'll make another banner. So we, we know a range now, um, pretty simple. Um, we're gonna do select next. Um, okay, so uh, we can also select specific columns that we want to look at. And so let's only pull out the days from the flights. It doesn't really give us any information really, but just for example purposes. Uh, so select from my data, which we always say what where we're getting our data from first, because that's what select calls for. Um, and then we're gonna do year, month, and day. So we're saying select 
from my data the columns year, month, and day. We'll hit run. And now if we were to print calendar, you see we get a data frame. This is only the first 10 rows. Um, remember, you can always go and click over here. We'll look at over here. So you have year, month, and day of every flight. So you have all the entries, the 336, 700, and 336,776 observations, but just the year, month, and day. Like I said, not really useful data, but just to show you that you can pull that out. Um, so what else can we do? Um, uh, we can also look at a range of columns. So let's say another way we could have done the same thing. So we'll say calendar two is to select uh, from my data uh, year through day. So the colon just means through, right? So calendar two, so it's calendar one and calendar two, you look up here, they're identical, 336, seven, 336,776 observations of three variables. I click on calendar view, your month, day. Uh, let's change this to, um, let's quick look at uh, my data. So we'll change it from month to carrier, just because it's easy to spell. Um, so I'm going to, oops, don't do that. Um, I'm going to copy this, um, and I'm going to write, let's look at all columns, months through carrier. I'm going to change this to carrier, and call this, I guess, calendar three. It's got other stuff in it too. All right, but if I look at calendar three now, you can see that we selected 10 variables where we started with uh, Oh no, we did year through carrier. Year all the way through carrier. Um, so that's a way that you can subset your data set. Um, say you got a bunch of columns you're not gonna use your, for your analyses. You can just get them out of there because you don't wanna look at them. Um, and, and it is important. Um, you might think, okay, well, that's a luxury. Well, if you start appending columns, which we'll get to a, a little bit later, um, you don't want a bunch of stuff in the middle that you're not gonna use. And it just kind of makes it less readable so you can get rid of uh, what you don't want um, so you can also um, choose which columns not to include so an example of this would be we'll call it everything else uh, is the name of our data frame and we'll say select uh, from my data, and we'll say minus, and we'll say year through day, and we'll run that. Uh, oh, it's not my data, it's my data. Okay. So we got everything else now. Um, so this, as you see, it starts with a departure time and it goes all the way to the end. We got rid of the actual dates. Um, so what would happen if instead of a minus we put a exclamation point? Uh, where'd everything else to go? You see it's the exact same thing. So, um, so this is everything else too. So either of those work. You can use negative um, in this case, not all the time. Um, so negative in some functions will work the same as the not, the exclamation point, um, but don't don't think they're always interchangeable. Um, in this instance, we can also use the not operator, exclamation point. Okay, cruising along here. Um, so there are some other helper functions I'm not going to do. I'm going to list them here. Um, just in an effort to keep the video a little bit shorter. Um, so there are also some other helper functions that can help you select the columns or data you are looking for. 
And so some of these examples are starts with. Um, and so in this example, we'll do starts with X, Y, Z. And that would, um, will select the values that start with X, Y, Z. Um, so if you're, say, let's look at something to give an example here, everything else. Um, so say you want only the tail numbers that start with N1. Well, you could do the starts with N1 and we'll get rid of anything that does not start with N1. Um, so it's a way of, of filtering, right? Um, you could similarly, I guess, um, makes logical sense, do ends with uh, XYZ. So say you wanted all the tail numbers of the planes that ended with XYZ. Um, so this will select the values that end with XYZ. Uh, you can do contains XYZ. So um, oops, this uh, will select values that contain XYZ. So this impor it's important to note though with this is it only selects XYZ in order. It doesn't search through the whole string and see if there's an X and then somewhere else a Y and then somewhere else a Z. It has to have XYZ in that order. Um, there are logical operators that you can say contains an X, contains a Y, and contains a Z in any order. Uh, we'll likely get into those at a different date, but at this point, this is only a string of XYZ in, you know, one after another. Uh, the last one, we'll do matches. Uh, so, matches is kind of like contains, um, except it has to match it identically. Um, so if it is, if your tail number is XYZ1, that doesn't match. It has to be exactly XYZ with no additional numbers before or numbers after. Contains, it can have numbers before or numbers after. It just has to have that in the word, right? Um, so matches is, is an identical uh, case. Um, okay, so let me take a look here what we got to do. Um, let's do one more thing here. Um, so renaming. So sometimes when you look at, um, let's look at the head of my data again. I've got the underscore that um, we can see sometimes when I first looked at this data um, it didn't immediately occur to me what DEP was <laughs> um, until I saw ARR and then I realized it was departure and, arri uh, departure and arrival um, so sometimes you may have some columns that when you got the data from wherever the data was deposited whether it was a database or your collaborator gave it to you or you scraped it from the web or whatever um, it might not be super intuitive. And, you, and if you have a lot of different columns, you want to remember what they do, you might want to name them something um, that makes sense to you, right? Um, so there is a function uh, in this tidyverse package called rename. And what you can do is say rename in my data. Um, we're going to say that we're changing, you name it, the first variable you put is what you want it to be named. So we're going to say depart. Uh, We'll say departure. Departure time um, is equal to depart. No, dep time, right? That was what it was before. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, so now we should have departure time, right? Instead of dep time. Um, so that's, like I said, if you have big data sets and you pull them from somewhere else, and you have to keep going back and looking, okay, what was this column? What does this mean? You can easily rename it using the rename uh, my data. But if you look too, it saves it forever, right? Um, so if you want to, oh no, this one did save it, excuse me, my data. That's weird, why is it? 
Oh, uh, so we have to save it as actually. Um, I did it too. Right, because this is this is gonna change it on your display, but it's not gonna change it saved. So here's another. All right, so here's another trick. All right, um, so we have my data too. Uh, so it says departure time now, right? And my data uh, still says depth time. So if you want to permanently change my data and not have to create another one, you can do this. You can say my data is rename my data. So you're saving the new file as the old file's name, so it'll replace it. So if I run this, my data now has departure time, right? So I've changed the original. Be careful with this because there's no way of going back. You have to go back and rerun all the code from the beginning uh, if you do this. But there is a way to permanently change. Like it's not so bad with column uh, column headers, right? Or column names. Um, but if you change other things, uh, modify your variables, you don't have a master copy. So sometimes it's nice to do the my data too and start running with that because then you always have the original my data saved in your instance. It's not. You're not changing the raw file, but your instance, it's, it's changed in. So um, just a, a consideration to make. Um, yeah, so. So that's where we're going to kind of end on this one. I try to keep them within that 15 minute time frame so your brain doesn't fog up and fall asleep. Uh, especially with this nice chill music bed that we got playing on here, right? Uh, so we'll continue on modifying uh, and playing with data sets in the next one. I'll see you there.